Hi, welcome to Beta and the Power of a Hypothesis Test. In this video, we'll be discussing two things. First, we'll be talking about the power of a hypothesis test. So the power of a hypothesis test is the probability, if the alternative hypothesis is true, that you will correctly reject the null hypothesis. And toward the end of the video, we'll also be talking about the probability of a type 2 error, which is called beta, and we'll be talking about how it's related to the power of the test. Now, there is some prerequisite knowledge that we'll be assuming that you already have in this video. So, first of all, we'll be assuming that you already know a little bit about hypothesis testing. If you'd like to know more about hypothesis testing, you can check out a couple of videos on this channel. First, what's a p-value? And second, the video statistical significance. We'll also be talking about one-tailed hypothesis tests. A discussion of one-tailed and two-tailed hypothesis tests and when you might use each is given in the video one-tailed versus two-tailed hypothesis tests. We'll also be using the 68959997 rule and related features of the Gaussian distribution. Info on this topic can be found in the video Features of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution Part 2, Probability Bands and the 68959997 rule. In particular, there are a couple of results from that video that we'll be using in this video without proving them again. And lastly, you'll also need to know a little bit about type 2 errors. If you'd like to learn more about this, you can check out the video Type 1 and Type 2 Errors in Hypothesis Testing. Okay, so now let's talk about our null and alternative hypotheses. So we're going to imagine that we're measuring some quantity that we'll call Q. Under the null hypothesis, Q takes on the value Q0. Under the alternative hypothesis, Q takes on the value QA. And here both Q0 and QA are values that we already know. For concreteness, we're going to take QA to be greater than Q0 in this video. But the case where QA is less than Q0 would work analogously. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure Q and we're going to get some result which we're going to call Q measured. In this example we're going to assume that the measurement errors are Gaussian and that the measurement uncertainty is sigma Q. Now we're going to plot a quantity that we call P of Q measured. So this is the probability density for the measured value Q measured under each of the two hypotheses. So under the null hypothesis, which we're going to call H naught, Q measured is Gaussian distributed around Q naught and this Gaussian has a standard deviation of sigma q. On the other hand, under the alternative hypothesis, which we're going to call HA, q measured is again Gaussian distributed, but this time around qa. And again, it's going to have a standard deviation sigma q. So we should point out here that we have assumed that the measurement uncertainty is independent of the true value of Q. And for that reason, we've taken the Gaussians to have the same width sigma Q. But we should note that this is not necessarily the case in a real world example. Okay, so the value of Q under the alternative hypothesis QA is known 
and we know that QA is greater than Q0. So, for these reasons, you decide to do a one-tailed test. You choose your significance level, which we call alpha, and if the p-value of your measured value Q measured is less than alpha, then you will reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so we have the probability density of Q measured for the two hypotheses. But the rejection or non-rejection of the null hypothesis H0 depends on the compatibility of the measured value Q measured with the null hypothesis. So, for the moment, we can just forget about the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so let's say, for example, you take alpha equal to 0 0.05. We're going to define a quantity that we'll call Q critical. And Q critical is going to be chosen such that under the null hypothesis, in 95% of experiments, Q measured would fall below Q critical. And in 5% of experiments, Q measured would fall above Q critical. Okay, so here we see that we've labeled something called Q critical 95% of experiments would have Q measured fall to the left of Q critical, and 5% would have Q measured fall to the right of Q critical. Now, under the null hypothesis, approximately 95% of experiments will return Q measured less than Q naught plus about 1.64 sigma q. And we're getting that result from the video Features of the Gaussian or Normal Distribution Part 2. And you can check that out for details. Okay, so this tells us that for alpha equals 0 0.05, q critical is equal to q naught plus 1.64 sigma q. Okay, so we're going to reject the null hypothesis if Q measured falls at a value greater than Q critical. So for our example here of taking alpha equal to 0 0.05 with a one-tailed test with Q alpha greater than Q naught, this means that we will reject the null hypothesis if Q measured is greater than Q0 plus 1.64 sigma Q. And if Q measured is less than Q0 plus 1.64 sigma Q, we will not reject the null hypothesis. Alternatively, if we had chosen alpha equals 0 0.01, we would want Q critical such that 99% of experiments fall below Q critical and 1% fall above. This is true for Q critical approximately equal to Q naught plus 2.33 sigma Q. So this means that if you had chosen alpha equals 0 0.01, you would reject the null hypothesis if Q measured is greater than Q naught plus 2.33 sigma Q. Okay, so now we can finally get to talking about the definition of the power of the test. So the power of a hypothesis test is the probability under the alternative hypothesis that you will correctly reject the null hypothesis. We can also put this another way. So imagine that the alternative hypothesis is true. In this scenario, what is the probability that you will correctly reject the null hypothesis? That probability is the power of the test. Okay, so we want the probability of rejecting the null hypothesis under the alternative hypothesis.
Now remember that in this example, you reject the null hypothesis if Q measured falls to the right of Q critical. So under the alternative hypothesis, Q measured is Gaussian distributed around QA. So we want the probability under the alternative hypothesis of Q measured falling to the right of Q critical. So the probability under the alternative hypothesis of Q measured falling above Q critical is equal to the area under the alternative hypothesis curve to the right of Q critical. So this is the area shown in the plot in red. This is the probability under the alternative hypothesis of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. This is the power of the test. There's also the area under the alternative hypothesis curve to the left of Q critical. This is the probability under the alternative hypothesis of incorrectly failing to reject the null hypothesis. Here we show it in purple. So this latter number is called beta. And the total area under the alternative hypothesis curve is 1, so the power of the test, which is the red area, is 1 minus beta. Okay, so let's briefly remind ourselves what a type 2 error is. A type 2 error is a failure to reject the null hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is, in fact, correct. So, if the alternative hypothesis is correct, the probability of committing a type 2 error is this quantity that we just saw, called beta. Okay. So let's summarize what we've seen. First, we've seen that the power of a hypothesis test is the probability, under the alternative hypothesis, of correctly rejecting the null hypothesis. Second, we've seen that it is related to the probability, under the alternative hypothesis, of committing a type 2 error, which is called beta. And lastly, we've seen that the power of the test is, in fact, equal to 1 minus beta.